Good morning, good evening, my Kingdom School family. Thank you so much for joining the lesson today. Welcome back to Kingdom School. Welcome to Discovering Our Purpose, Calling and Gifts course, lesson number two. And I believe you were blessed by last week's. I hope you had listened to it more than once because it was like, oh my God, it was like too much to handle in one lesson and it's too much to understand and grasp you have to hear it again and again and again to really settle in our brain and also our brain to understand it our heart to receive it and our spirit and man to come into alignment with god's purpose oh something happens to a human being when they come into alignment with god's purpose remember purpose unleashes god's provision like you heard last week god is committed to his purpose any creation any creature any human being from anywhere from any background step out to fulfill their god-given purpose which is to have dominion to dominate a part of creation they attract god's favor and provision believe me on this any person, well, they don't even have to believe in God because dominion is a law. Like the law of gravity is applicable to everybody, whether you're a Christian believer, going to church, heathen, doesn't believe in God. Gravity is applicable to everybody equally, right? Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean, oh, gravity, I'm going to leave you alone because you're a Christian, you're born again. No. Gravity is applicable equally to every human being. Dominion is a law. I'm going to teach you that. Dominion is a law. It is equally applicable to every single human being ever born on this planet Earth because that's why God created us. So when an individual, when a person step into that law to fulfill God-given purpose, it activates something for them. God's favor, God's provision. Now, God's provision means it's not like we say in Christianese, like God rains down rain on heathens, wicked, and everybody, you know. They enjoy God's blessings. The sun shines on everybody, not just on Christians. And, 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 and God's laws are applicable to everyone, whether they go to heaven or hell, whether they're saved, unsaved, God's laws are applicable. If you touch a, a candle that is burning, you're going to get burnt, whether you're a Christian or a heathen. That is the law, okay? If you touch a fire, you'll get burnt. That is a law, the same way the law of dominion. So today we are going to further go uh, further jump into and discover about our purpose for which God has created us. So let's pray and ask God to really help us to understand this because unless God makes it clear to us, I cannot make it clear to you because it has to be done with the Holy Spirit because we have been brainwashed by religion for so long. And when you hear things like this, you will, you will feel like it. Your brain will resist it first. Your heart will try to uh, um, resist it because, oh my goodness, how can this be true? How come I didn't know this before? That's how brain receives or deals with new information. Anytime our brain receives a new information that we are not familiar, that we are not used to, the first reaction is resist it. So don't resist it. That's why you need to listen to it again and again. So your brain will open up to accept the truth of God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to come before you. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined this Discovering Your Purpose, Father. They have activated your favor, your provision, your protection over their life just by taking a step to learn this course from this kingdom school.
they have activated God's favor upon your life. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I release that God's favor, authority, provision, protection, and favor upon you that your life will never be the same. Holy Spirit, thank you for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand, to step into the assignment you have for us. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. You are the teacher. Open the eyes of our understanding, our hearts to know, to receive, to understand. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Man, and man, let me share this screen here and we are ready to roll. I already feel the glory of God all over me. Even though I said sevenfold purposes of mankind last week, I changed it to seven dimensions of our purpose. When God said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. That word dominion is a very complex word. God created us, simple meaning, to dominate this planet Earth. What he created, not people, but the people who lost dominion over the creation, what happens is they try to dominate other individuals. That is evil. Dominion is kingdom. Domination is demonic. Anybody who tries to dominate you, whether the husband or wife, or wife or husband, or neighbor or another neighbor, poor or rich, black or white, white or black, <laughs> anybody trying to dominate somebody, it's not kingdom that is demonic. God created us to have dominion over the creation what he made the earth and the resources and the creation god has created how do we supposed to treat each other love one another that's why bible jesus's command remember this commandment i give you that you love one another not dominate one another not rule over one another you have no right to rule over anybody you have no right to dominate anybody it is a new new message maybe for some people in some culture because they are so used to dominating through religion, through position, through title, apostle called, you know, prophet and so on. So they use this title to dominate people. Don't do that. That's evil. Amen. So we are going to, we are going to discover and explore the seven dimensions of our purpose what was in the mind of god when he said let them have dominion why did god say let them have dominion over the fish of the sea first why did he say that birds of the air over the cattle see dominion over all this creation, over all the earth over all Every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that's where we need to exercise our dominionship or dominion. So this purpose of dominion has seven dimensions because humans are a complex being. Just like the word dominion is a complex word. He didn't just say, let them rule or let them govern he used the Hebrew word dominion, rada in Hebrew, which is dominion in English. It's a complex word because we are also a complex creatures. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, we can think, we can see, we can foresee into the future, we can think about the past. We have so many capacities and abilities God has given to us and they were given to us for a reason. So this one purpose for which we are all created, which is dominion, has seven different dimensions. So number one is simply dominion, means to rule. To rule over the creation, fish of the sea, birds of the air. Everything was subject to human being when God created all of the creation. The creation is rebelling now 
because of the fall, because of the rebellion of man. We rebelled against God. Creation rebels against us, against us. And we experience natural disasters and destructions and everything because of our rebellion against God and his purpose. Somebody asked me a question, Abraham, do we really have authority over natural disasters and all those things? If Yes, we do. But we have to first submit to God's authority and God's purpose, which is dominion. So dominion simply means dominate the creation that God has created. Everything God has created as a potential. He created them with potential. This earth has potential. But if you have to experience and benefit from that potential, you have to cultivate. You have to dominate that earth. You have to cultivate, plant, then nurture it, protect it. Then you harvest it. That's dominion. Food won't just show up in your plate. There's a process involved behind that food. You know, your cloth won't just appear on its own. Somebody has to go to this manufacturing place, collect the materials to make this cloth. Then he had to go to somebody who stitches your shirt. And oh my God, the process that is involved, that is called dominion. A car won't just appear out of nothing. God created the raw materials. Then he had to use your idea, imagination, engineering um, capacity to put together an automobile or a car. That is called dominion. If you just sit simply and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and hallelujah, and speaking tongues, that food is not going to arrive. <laughs> Maybe food will arrive for a day supernaturally, but the next day you have to go and make and do something. You have to exercise the law of dominion over the spirit world or the natural world. Even if food appears, by God, supernaturally, because you exercised dominion in the spirit world. That's how it works. So dominion means simply rule. And we are going to learn 12 definitions of dominion maybe next week. This is the sevenfold dimensions of our purpose, which is to have dominion over the creation, the natural world we see. You don't just find gold and copper and, and silver laying on the surface of the earth. You have to mine it. Oh, my Lord, that is hard work. You have to filter through tons and tons of dirt to find an ounce of gold or a silver or a diamond. They don't just show up. That's why they're so precious. That's why they're so costly. The more, put, ex, the more energy and exercise it takes to produce something, it costly becomes. This computer that I'm using to teach you, it didn't just appear. Somebody has to put that creativity, put the materials to the, all the pieces and parts together to design it and then sell it, market it. That is dominion. Okay? So that is the first dimension of our purpose. At least we should start exercising that dimension of our dominion. Cultivate the land that God has given you. If there is land laying vacant, go and borrow it. Take a loan. Somebody in Zambia doing it. Actually, many people are doing it. They are, they are renting farms and cultivating it. That is dominion. Keep doing it. Make the land productive. You're honoring God and God is going to honor you for exercising dominion and you will never be poor. Why? Because a person, when they step in, step out to fulfill their God-given purpose, which is to have dominion, they break the back of poverty. They break the law of poverty. They activate the law of prosperity in God's kingdom. When you exercise the law of dominion, your purpose, the second dimension of dominion is to function as a gate of heaven. There are gates of heaven on the earth and there are gates of hell. What is a gate? A gate is something that gives permission or denies permission. What is a gate? A gate is something that gives 
or denies access or permission to go in or to come out. That's a gate. Mankind have been created as a gate of heaven over the earth. That means if heaven wants to do something on the earth, it needs the partnership of a human being. We have to open the gate for God. We have to open the gate of heaven for God to access, to accomplish his will on this planet earth. That's why we read in Psalm 24, 24 about the gates of the Lord, the ancient gates, the everlasting gates. Open up everlasting gates. Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God Almighty, mighty in battle. We are supposed to be operating as gate of heaven, not gates of hell. But unfortunately, unbelievers, unsaved people, demon-possessed people are operating as the gates of hell. They give Satan and his kingdom access to operate on the earth. They give permission to Satan and his kingdom. But the authority to rule has been given to mankind, not to Satan and his kingdom. Mankind gave it away to Satan. Jesus took it back. The last Adam took it back, gave it back to us. The right has been restored. The right to rule this planet, to have dominion, has been restored to mankind. But the believers still, they don't believe that. They don't know that. The unbeliever is exercising that right. They manufacture. They come up with products. They come up with inventions. They come up with new ideas. Well, the believer is sitting inside the building and singing Kumbaya. Get out of there and exercise your dominion in Jesus' name. So the second dimension of our purpose is to operate as the gate of heaven. When you buy a piece of land, when you buy a property, you go and thank God and invite him, Lord, I open up the gate for you to come in. I open up the gate for you to come into my family, to my country, to my community, to this land that you have given me. Come and exercise and establish your kingdom and your will on the earth in over this land, over my family, over my community, over my nation. When you travel across your nation, you speak that and you release heaven around you. You release the kingdom of God that is in you. You act Activate it. You appropriate it. If you don't activate and appropriate it, nothing become real to you. You cannot realize anything. This is a this is a powerful principle. I wanted to capture. You cannot actualize or realize anything unless you appropriate and activate it in God's kingdom. Whether it is healing, blessings, peace, salvation, whatever it is, forgiveness, deliverance. You cannot actualize something. You cannot realize it, something, if you do not appropriate it and activate it in your spirit, man, by speaking it. That's how you activate and you appropriate it. So the second dimension of our purpose is to operate, to function as a gate of heaven. The third dimension of our purpose is to provide legal access to God and his kingdom, and his angels, and his Holy Spirit, and to his seven spirits of the Lord. What does it mean by to provide legal access? Do you know the mystery, the secret? Any spirit being to operate on the earth. Earth is a physical world. Heaven is a spiritual realm. You cannot see heaven. It is invisible. Even though you cannot see things around you, there are things around you. Invisible substance is always moving around you, which you cannot see with your eyes, but they are there. They are made with invisible material or substance. It's all around you in the atmosphere. <laughs> right next to you, they are there. You cannot see it because your spiritual eyes are not open. So any spirit being whether it is satanic or God's spirit to operate on the earth, they need a legal access. 
they need somebody with a physical object or a body to give them legal right to operate on the earth. Why? It is to humans God gave the legal right to rule this planet earth, not to Satan, not to anybody else. Ever since if God wants to do something, he has to have a partner. Do you want to be a partner with God Almighty? Are you willing to partner with God? I remember the prayer that I taught you, the most powerful prayer you can pray. Lord, make me part of what you are doing in the earth today. What is the most powerful prayer? Lord, make me part of, I want to partner with you in what you're doing on the earth today and watch out God will do through you in your life. So our, the third dimension of our purpose of dominion is to provide legal access for spirit being, especially God and his angels and the Holy Spirit to operate on the earth. Satan has to abide with the same rule. If Satan wants to operate on the earth, he is a spirit being. Demons are demonic spirits or unclean spirits. If they want to operate or accomplish or manifest their evil nature or deeds on the earth, they have to manifest through a physical body. Whether it is a murder, rape, or injustice, what stealing, lying, whatever is done, it is a human body who is doing it. But the spirit behind will be demonic. But it is done through a human being because we are the one with the physical body. That is the purpose of our body, to give God legal access to operate on the earth. That's why God gave us or created us with a physical body to give God legal access to operate in the physical world on the earth. Satan has to do the same thing. That's why Satan came into the garden and he couldn't do anything to Adam and Eve until he got a physical body that made him legal in the garden. Who provided Satan the physical body? Which creature gave Satan the, the legal right? The serpent. Why Satan chose serpent? Because serpent was more cunning than any other creatures that God, the Lord God has made. And here is the secret. Are you ready for this? I want to tell you a mystery that you never heard before. This is the reason God told Adam to have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, physical objects that he created, over every creeping thing that creeps on the planet earth. Do you know why? Because they are the one, these creatures are the one with the physical body. Satan had access to this planet Earth before Adam was created. I hope you read the Gospel of the Kingdom book. If you didn't read that book, I would encourage you. Or releasing kings and queens to, to their original intent. Get those books and read it, please. Because that books, those books explains the pre-Adamic life of the Earth. What happened? What was happening on the earth before Adam arrived? Remember I said last week, earth and water existed before the six days of creation because earth was created in the beginning when, he, when God created the heavens. They were both were created at the same time. They have heaven and earth the same age. Earth is as old as heaven. And Satan had access to this earth. Satan had a history to this planet earth. That's how he received the right to come into the garden. But he didn't have any legal right to operate on the earth, to do anything on the earth. He wanted a physical body because it was only to humans God gave the legal right to rule this planet. And if he has to do something, he has to get it from man.
First, he has to become legal by obtaining a physical body, which the serpent gave. Why God told Adam to have dominion over those creatures? Because God knew Satan would come to this planet Earth and will try to gain access to Earth, to legal right to rule this planet Earth, to establish his kingdom. So he was warning Adam, Adam, my son, be careful. If you see anything unusual, if you hear anything different than what I have told you from any of these creatures, you have to have dominion over them. Means dominate those creatures and put them where they belong. Do not let them do anything illegal or different than what I have told you. That's why God told Adam to have dominion over those creatures. Now you know, right? The fish of the sea, birds of the air, cattle, over all the earth, over all the creeping that creeps on the planet earth. That means there they were potential gates that the enemy could use. They were potential legal channels the enemy could use to gain access to the earth. That's why God told Adam to have dominion over those creatures. And Satan chose the creeping thing, the serpent, not the bird, not the fish. He could have used any of them. They were potential gates of hell. Oh, I hope you're understanding this. You need to listen to this teaching more than once, like I say about all the teachings. So God need legal access. Spirit beings need legal access. There are plenty of people who are committed to do the will of the enemy on this planet Earth. There are plenty of humans that gives Satan and demons legal access to operate on the Earth. Not very many are there to give God and his angels and his Holy Spirit and the seven spirits of the Lord legal access to operate on the Earth. That's why we are called the body of Christ, not the spirit of Christ, the body of Christ. Why we are called the body of Christ? Because we give Christ legal access on the earth. Whatever Christ wants to do on the earth, we are his body. We are his conduit or a channel that makes him legal on the earth. If Christ wants to do something in your government, he needs a body that will make him legal. If Christ wants to do something in the media world, he needs people that will make him legal in the media world. But he can't find anybody. Because everybody is busy waiting, clapping their hands and jumping up and down. Go and train yourself and make God legal in every component aspect of your country and community. And do not give any legal access to Satan and his kingdom. Possess every gates of your community for God and his kingdom. Dispossess enemy territories. And possess it for God's kingdom purpose. That is your assignment, dear child of God. Then you come to a place called church and sing and praise God and magnify Him. First you fulfill your purpose. First dominion, then worship, then praise. That's why God didn't tell Adam first to sing or praise or dance. Or He told, them, he told him first to what? Have dominion. Take dominion first. Then you come and praise just like David did. But if you dance like David danced without taking dominion like David did and ruling like David did, you get nothing. That's what I thought. They, they told me, you know, if you dance like David danced, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. What did you get? You dance like David danced and you go hungry, like... Why don't you rule like David ruled? Why don't you reign like David reigned when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you? Take dominion over the creation like David did. And then you come and dance and sing and praise and make his praise glorious. Make his praise the best praise and magnificent that you can. And God will come down with his angels to meet with you and to sit with you and to commune with you. He will come, I promise you. You take dominion and it activates God's favor and honor. 
God will come in person. Oh, God will come with his select angels to visit you, to sit with you, to commune with you, just like he did to Abraham. God said, how can I hide it from my friend, Abraham? You will become a friend of God if you have dominion. He will come and consult with you, to partner with you. Oh, my Lord, my God, I hope you're catching this. There's something happening to your spirit, man. You have been lifted, shifted into another realm in the spirit by hearing this teaching right now. And when you walk next time outside, you walk around like your daddy owns the planet and you are the gate to heaven and you hold the legal key to the spirit world and any spirit to operate on the planet earth, you give permission or don't give permission. Provide legal access for God and his spirit to operate on the earth. That is the third dimension. It was Adam's responsibility. It is mankind's responsibility to protect this earth from satanic intrusion. So what is jurisdiction means? Jurisdiction refers to the official power to make legal decisions and judgments or the territory or sphere of activity over which the legal authority of a court or entity, or a kingdom, or a government extends. You and I have been given the jurisdiction over this earth realm by God. The legal right to rule has been given to us. The jurisdiction to decide which spirit to operate, who comes here to visit on the earth, has been given to us. No alien can come without your permission, without human's permission. I don't even believe in aliens, but I believe in demons because Bible talks about it. But if a demon has to operate, somebody has to provide a body, some creature or some humans. Anything related to the earth realm is committed to mankind's jurisdiction. Genesis 2.19. That's why once God transferred the right to rule, he brought all the creatures he created to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called, see that name, see that phrase, and whatever Adam called, say whatever Adam called, because it's Adam's choice, it's Adam's right to call whatever he wanted. God just waited and watched what Adam was doing to see what he would do. That's why God brought them to Adam. And even to destroy the enemy, take back, God has to become a man. Because it is to mankind, to a man that God has given the legal right and the spiritual authority over the earth to rule, to have dominion. That's why Jesus became a man. Jesus couldn't become a monkey to defeat the devil. David wouldn't be defeated by a monkey. Jesus couldn't become a, a couldn't come as a lion, even though he's the lion of Judah. He cannot come as a lion to earth to destroy Satan. Why? Because it is illegal. Say, lion has no authority in the natural over the demonic world. It is to mankind God gave the authority to rule. The same thing in the New Testament, Matthew 16, 19. I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever. See that phrase, whatever you saw in Genesis? is the same thing in the New Testament. Whatever you bind means whatever you permit on the earth. It will be permitted by heaven and whatever you lose, whatever you don't permit on the earth, it, will be, it won't be permitted by heaven. So that is the fourth dimension of our purpose is protect the earth from satanic intrusion. Satan and his demons had no legal right to do anything on the earth until it was given to them by Adam. Actually, they stole it from Adam. Do you know what Satan did through deception by making them eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The devil stole their birthright to rule this planet Earth. That's what happened there. Adam didn't lose heaven. Adam didn't lose some music instrument. Adam lost the legal right to rule. Or actually, it was shared with the Satan and his kingdom. And Satan used it and began to establish his kingdom through his 
wicked people. Every wicked person is a servant of the devil. Every unsaved person is a legal access to Satan and his kingdom on the earth. So it was, it was our responsibility to protect the earth from satanic intrusion, to protect them. Keep the gates closed to Satan and his kingdom. That's our responsibility. Keep the gates of our nation closed, government, media, education, so Satan has no access to those gates to influence the mind of the people through the news, through music, through social media, through books, through anything. No gate should be left undetected by God's people. So it was our responsibility, but we failed in that mission. We opened the gates wide for Satan and his kingdom to come in. And here we see the result of it. Destruction and death and evil and famine and disorder and natural disasters. Every kind of pandemic and sickness and disease all came in because we didn't fulfill the assignment God gave to us, the responsibility God gave to us to protect the earth. Woo, that's why we have to appoint watchmen. Watchmen and watchwomen. Imagine every nation comes under the kingdom of God over the kingdom rule and we appoint watchmen and watchwomen to protect the atmosphere and the earth and the nations from Satan and his kingdom. Is it even possible? It is possible. I see it in my spirit because that is God's eternal purpose and plan for mankind. That's why he put the church on the earth. The fifth dimension of our purpose is to rule the earth. Political rule. This is talking about get into politics, possess the gates of government, be the president, prime minister, city mayor, governor. If you are called to do it, do it. If that is your kingdom assignment, get in there. Never say politics is of the devil and government belongs to Satan. Never say that. If you said it, repent. And ask God to forgive you. Government belongs to the Lord. All authority comes from him. Government must be upon his shoulders. As we read in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. And to us a child is born. Son is given. Government is supposed to be upon his shoulders. Not the sh shoulders of the wicked or Satan. That's why Proverbs 29 verse 2. We read when the righteous are in authority. People rejoice. Let there be righteous people in authority in every city, every town, in every country and nation on this planet Earth. Beginning with Zambia, because that is the last country. Starts with the Z or Z. <laughs> That's the last letter. Let it start. Let the last be the first. According to the Bible, the first will be last. America starts with A. <laughs> I don't want to prophesy in the negative, but let's start with Zambia because there's so many students who are learning about God's kingdom in Zambia and you are going to transform that nation for God's kingdom. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish ambitions. Don't go in there with the, your own agenda to build your own little kingdoms. Go in to build God's kingdom. Rule the earth. Let those Caribbean islands be ruled by God's people. Let the churches in Caribbean raise up future presidents and prime ministers in their country and judges and Supreme Court justices. Every judge must be righteous judge in our country. Every law, every court must be ruled by righteous judge. Every hospital must be led by righteous doctors. Here is Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. The sixth dimension of our purpose of dominion is to maximize and manage the resources. So God has created this earth, like I said in the beginning. You have to require. You have to require from the earth to produce something for you. It won't just show up. Food won't show up. Clothes won't show up. Product won't ha show up. House won't just show up built. You have to build it. You have to collect the materials and bring it and build it using your brain 
and your creativity. That is called dominion. That's why God didn't create furniture, but he hid the furniture inside the tree and, you, and he gave you the tree and said, go and get the furniture from that tree. That's why God didn't create cars, but he hid the cars in the raw materials. He didn't create airplanes. He created the raw materials and gave somebody an idea to put all those pieces together in the right shape and right place, and it became an airplane. Maximize, let that copper belt in Zambia, gold mines in Africa, silver mines and diamond mines in Africa come back to the hands of the righteous, not to the thieves from other countries that comes to steal your resources from your country. In Jesus' name. Instead of teaching children how to sing, teach them about dominion. I told you last week, the first words that should be taught to a child is Genesis 1.26. Not Jesus loves me, this I know. The seventh dimension of our purpose is to glorify and worship God. We love this, don't we? Glorify and worship God. How do we glorify God? We go wake up in the morning and say, glory, 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 glory. Is that how we glorify God? How did Jesus glorify his father? He was the son. He was a son of man, right? How did Jesus glorify the father? He said in John chapter 17, Father, I glorified your name by completing the work that you gave me to do. I finished the work that you gave me to do. I glorify your name. That's how you glorify the name of your father, by completing the work he gave it to you to do. Jesus said, by seeing your good work, they will glorify your father in heaven in Matthew chapter 5 or 6, I believe. By seeing your good works, not helping the poor. Good works is building a building, inventing an airplane, inventing the next invention. That's a good work, not charitable work. And worship God. How do we worship God? How did Adam worship God? How did Jesus worship God? God, his father. How did the disciple worship Jesus every day? Did they sing, sit around him and say, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Is that what, how they worship Jesus? <laughs> That's another word that has been misused and abused by religious people, the word worship. The word worship appears 190 times in the New King James Bible. How many times? 190 times. And I'm going to say something that's going to shock you now. The word worship appears 190 times in the Bible, not even once. What did I say? Not even once it is mentioned in relation to singing or music. You think about that for a minute. Not even once the word worship is mentioned in the Bible in relation to singing or music. Now the question is then, what is worship? How do you worship God? Go and check the law of first mention. Where is the word worship appears for the first time in the Bible? If you read the book, you might already know it. The word worship appears for the first time in the Bible in Genesis chapter 22, when God told Abraham to take his only son, whom he waited for 25 years, to go and sacrifice him in the mountain that he told him. And Abraham took his son, his servants, wood and fire, traveled for three days. They reached the foot of the mountain and, and Abraham looked at his servant and said, you servant stay here, me and the lad or the child will go and worship God and will come back to you. That is the first time the word worship appears in the Bible. That is the first time the word worship appears in the Bible. Now the question is, how did Abraham and Isaac worship God? in that mountain. He went there, built the altar, took his only son, bound him and put him on the altar and, and he took the knife and about to cut his throat and God came down and stopped him. That was worship. 
Wow. It costed him something. The first time the word worship appears in the New Testament is in Matthew chapter 2. When the wise men came to the east looking for King Jesus, they came to Herod's palace and asked him, where is the king of the Jews? We came to worship him. And Herod said, we don't know. Is there another king that was born? Then I better kill him. But the wise men left and found Jesus in Bethlehem. And when they found him and they saw him, they opened their treasures that they brought. They brought treasures for Jesus and his family. They opened their treasures and gave Jesus gold, myrrh, and frankincense. And then says, they fell down and worshipped him. That is the first place the word worship appears in the New Testament. If worship doesn't cost you something, that's not worship. It costed Abraham his only son. It costed father his only begotten son. It costed the wise men the treasures they brought from or they accumulated maybe all their life to bring it to Jesus and, and, and presented those treasures to him. And then they fell down and worshipped him. And we made worship so cheap. Whatever song the pop culture will sing and, and we bring it to church and he tried to sing that song and call it worship. That is praise. That could be praise. Praise is different from worship. Thanksgiving is different from worship and praise. Praise is different. We can praise God as long as we want. But worship is something costly. So worship is something expensive and it's very, very, um, how do I say it? I'm looking for a word, very holy. Worship is very heavy stuff, heavy duty stuff, not cheap. Don't make worship so cheap. Please do a word study on worship in your Bible. Find out every place the word worship is mentioned 190 times and you'll be shocked. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free in Jesus' name. Come out of the bondage of tradition and religion and blindness and deception. Come to the freedom. Come to Christ. Come to his kingdom. And fulfill your purpose. That's what he's waiting for you, not to hear you sing from heaven. God did not put mankind on the earth to hear them sing to him from heaven. God put you here to have dominion. In Jesus' name, I bless you to have dominion. I activate the law of dominion in you because you're listening to this class and to this lesson. So those are the seven dimensions of our purpose. Please don't forget it. Go over this. Study again. Read those books, that book, and read every Bible verse is mentioned in it. And you're, here is a deliverance prayer, commitment prayer to the Father. Are you ready to pray this prayer? I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Repeat this after me word by word and mean it in your heart. Pray it loud so every atmosphere atom in your body can hear it. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving me your kingdom and creating me as a king on this earth. Open my eyes to see and receive the mysteries of your kingdom. Please make me part of what you're doing on this earth right now. I dedicate my life and everything I have to establish your kingdom for your purpose. To see your will done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus Christ's holy name I pray. Amen! Somebody shout Amen. Take a picture of that prayer, a screenshot, and pray that prayer again. In Jesus' name, let it be a real. Let that prayer, you activated something right now. You appropriated something in your spirit, man. Your life will never be the same. Again, in Jesus' name. Now we are going to 
go into the next section of this course, functions of mankind, okay? We, are, we were learning about the purpose of mankind and we are going to learn now the functions of mankind. You may ask, what is the difference between purpose and function? Remember, function is built into help us fulfill our purpose. You can function and not fulfill your purpose. What is the purpose of a, for, of a car? The purpose of a car is transportation. It has to take you from one place to the next place. But if you leave the car engine on and that car is not taking anybody anywhere, it's not fulfilling its purpose, it is functioning. The engine is running, everything is running, it's supposed to, but it's not driving anywhere, driving anybody anywhere. That's the difference between purpose and function. Function is built in. Purpose is the reason of existence. Function is the process, built-in process that help us to fulfill that purpose. Unfortunately, everybody's functioning, but only a few are fulfilling their purpose. So we're going to learn about eight fundamental functions of humans that God has established. There are hundreds and thousands of functions of mankind. It is impossible for me to mention everything. Even looking is a function. I, I'm raising my hand when I speak is a function of my body. So there are thousands of functions of our body, but I'm only talking about eight fundamental functions of human being. Number one, mankind was created for relationship with God and other people. Even though God created us to have dominion, you cannot fulfill your purpose without relationship. Why did you come to this kingdom school? Because of relationship. Now we are starting a relationship through this kingdom school. I had a privilege to meet you, to see you on Zoom and get to know you, your name, where you're from. And through you, many other people are going to come to the kingdom school and to this knowledge because you are going to get excited. You're already excited. And you want everybody, the whole world to know what you know now, right? <laughs> so we were created. We are relational being. Without relationship, we cannot function. And also, majority of the problems in our life also comes through relationship. So every other relationship we have is a reflection of our relationship with God. If our relationship with God is not in the right place, no other relationship would work properly because he is our source. We came from him. If we think God is distant from us, we will be distant from other people. If we believe God is not happy with us, we won't be happy with other people. We won't be able to connect with other people. If, if we believe God doesn't love us, we cannot really love other people. Because it's a reflection, it's a flow. We are a conduit of his blessings. The second fundamental function is mankind was created to work or to achieve. We are created to work and to achieve. God gave man before, work before he gave him a family. The first thing I ask people, what, is, what did God give Adam? Most people say Eve. No, 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 no. If God had given Adam a woman first, he would have destroyed his life <laughs> right there. God gave the garden. There are things that God gave to Adam. We will learn in the first course. There are 12 things that God gave to Adam. 12 or 7, I don't remember. Before he brought the last thing that God gave to Adam was his family, his wife. Before you have a wife, you have to have those other things in order before you go after a woman or a man. So that's why man is so concerned about his work. If a man is not happy with his work, no woman can make him happy. No sex would make him happy because man's identity is connected to his work or fulfillment. Man's fulfillment is connected to his work. If he is not happy with his work, if he is not fulfilled at his work, he won't be fulfilled at home. So that's why God brought the woman alongside to help him fulfill that work, that assignment God gave to him. But for a woman, work is not what is primary concern her relationship with her husband. 
for a woman, the relationship is not in the right place, she wouldn't be happy. For a man, the work is not fulfilling, he wouldn't be happy. So man is always looking to work, 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 work. What is he looking for? He's looking for fulfillment. A woman comes along, she wants to connect, 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 spend time with you, want to touch you, and she wants to hold you and be with you. And man says, I have to go to work, I have to go to work, leave me alone. And the fight starts. Woman wants to feel connection because that's where she finds her fulfillment. And woman and man wants to work because that's where he finds his fulfillment. So you have to balance between both. You have to understand the woman and the woman needs to understand the man. Man shouldn't spend all his time at work. She, he should spend some time with his woman. And woman shouldn't be always focusing on connecting, connecting, connecting. She should be helping him to fulfill his work, his assignment. That's why she, God created her. That's a long story. <laughs> you have to read the Kingdom Family book. It is very difficult to find a real man and a real woman these days. Very difficult, very rare. You will find a real woman. A real woman means a woman that God created in, in Genesis, who is willing to fulfill their responsibility because they have been abused, they have been misused, they have been, they have been taken advantage of by men. And the woman began to rebel. Especially in the Western world, the feminist movement, you know, they came about because of the abuse. They didn't want to fulfill their God-given assignment and the fulfillment. God created woman with the capacity to conceive in the spirit and in the natural womb. God gave Adam the vision, the seed, and he brought a woman to receive it. And when she give birth to that seed, that's when the vision is fulfilled. It takes shape through a woman. It brings to fulfillment through a woman. The seed that God has planted in a man, whether it is spiritual or natural. Man is a giver. Woman is a receiver first. But when a woman gives back, she gives back in its fulfilled state. You give a sperm to a woman, she will give you a child back. You give a house, to a woman, she will give you a home. You give her some groceries, she will give you a nice meal. You give a lot of nonsense to a woman, she will give you back hell. <laughs> so you be careful what you give to a woman because whatever you give to her, she will give it back multiplied. And it's bigger when it gives back. <laughs> it's amazing, right? The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden, Eden, to work it and take care of it. This was before Eve was brought to him. The third fundamental function of a man is mankind was created to expand, multiply, and grow. Mankind is always looking for new horizon. Now we are living in the world of cryptocurrency. I don't know how many of you heard of cryptocurrency is, right? What is cryptocurrency? People are tired of regular real money. Now they want to create digital money. They are, they are creating now digital land. Now they are creating digital world called metaverse. And you can buy property in the digital world. It's called a digital property, digital real estate. Millions of dollars. It's a trillion. It's going to be a trillion dollar business. We are constantly looking for new horizon, new depth, new heights, Mars, moon. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. God will never require something from you if he hasn't made a deposit first. He said he blessed them first means empowered them first, deposited what they need first. Then he required and told, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. They didn't give tithe to God, be blessed. They didn't sing any song to be blessed. It is the nature of God to bless. The fourth fundamental function of mankind is mankind was created to manifest the glory of God. That's where the Bible says, all have sinned and lost heaven, right? No, <laughs> that's not what the Bible says. All have sinned and came short of God's glory. 
We were created to live in God's glory. What is that? God's glory means everything he has, everything he is. In, in John chapter 2, by turning the water into wine at the wedding in Cana, the Bible says Jesus manifested his glory to his disciples. He revealed his glory by meeting a need in the natural, fulfilling that need. Mankind was created to live in God's glory. What does that mean? You're supposed to live in God's glory where you lack nothing. When you live in God's glory, you lack nothing. Everything will come to you. Glory of God was manifested in the Garden of Eden. When they sinned, the glory of God departed from them. That was their covering. That was their clothing. They were not ashamed, even though they were naked. When they lost the glory of God, they began to feel their weaknesses and nakedness. The word glory appears for the first time in Genesis 45, verse 13, where it says, again, the law of first mention. This is Joseph using the word glory. You shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. Can I believe a man is talking about himself, about all his glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen? And you shall hurry and bring my father down here. This is Joseph. When you fulfilling and, and functioning in the maximized capacity of your potential, that means you are fulfilling or living in your glory. That's why Jesus said, you look at the lilies of the field, even Solomon in all his glory did not array like one of these lilies that comes up today and tomorrow is gone. The fifth fundamental function of human is mankind was created to subdue and conquer. Man wants to conquer. That's why they like to fight. Not fight other people. We're supposed to be fighting mountains, oceans, sky, air, everything that God has created. The key to fulfilling your purpose is understanding the principle of subdue. What is subdue means? Make, submit by force. Not other people, but creatures. You try to learn a language, try to learn an instrument. After three weeks, that instrument will fight against you. And you want to quit. You be in the kingdom school for two weeks and you... The enemy will come up with an excuse. Oh, that's not, it's going to work for me. You subdue that emotion and come back and learn and finish this course or that instrument or that language. Whatever that you try to do something new, there will be resistance. You have to overcome that resistance. In Zambia, you have to overcome the resistance of the enemy and religious people against God's kingdom. That God bless them. The sixth fundamental function of mankind is mankind was created to function like god how does god function when he wants something he speaks that's how you are supposed to function when you need something the first thing you need to do is to speak it declare it we carry the dna of god what god is in heaven we are on the earth he creates and rules it is in the heart of man kind to establish something to build something that's why the Bible says, be imitators of God as dear children. Watch this little kid that imitates this man on television that he sees. That's the way we're supposed to do with God. When we read the Bible, we read how God operates and functions. Not about killing and destroying people. About the true nature of God. God is love. We're supposed to imitate him. So watch this video and see how this child imitates this man he sees on television.
Amen. So that's the way we are supposed to do with God. We are supposed to imitate God. The reason we are created in his image and likeness is because we can relate with him, understand him, know him, and function like him in a minor way. Not almighty. We are little mighties. <laughs> little mites. <laughs> The seventh fundamental function of human is mankind was created to manifest and represent God on the earth. We are the legal representatives of God on the earth. That's why we are called ambassadors. Who is an ambassador? Ambassador is a representative of a government in a foreign country representing his government, his president. So we are representing God on the earth. We are came from kingdom of heaven representing on the earth God. God wants each of us to be a king over something. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you in Christ's behalf, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. The eighth fundamental function of a mankind is mankind was created to glorify God by accomplishing the works that he created us to do. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and to Good works. Good works doesn't mean charitable work in the Bible, okay? That's what the religious spirit told us. Good work means any enterprise, anything that we do with our hands. The Greek word is ergon. That's what is used. We glorify God by fulfilling the works he has prepared for us. Ephesians 2.10. And also Matthew 5, Jesus said, by seeing your good work, they will glorify your Father in heaven. For you, are art, for you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Other functions, worship, loving one another, prayer, eating, fellowship, sharing, caring, studying, sleeping, forgiving, drinking coffee, are all part of our function, not our purpose. There is only one purpose, which is to have dominion over the earth. You can function and do all these things if we are not fulfilling our purpose, those functions goes waste. We are wasting our energy. And next week when we come back, we are going to learn about the law of dominion. I promised you we spend extra time on purpose because purpose is, in, is the most important thing. Then we'll go to calling. Then we go to gifts. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you live teaching today to answer your questions, to hear your comments and feedback. I want to hear it next week. I promise you, I'll be there live teaching the third lesson of discovering purpose, calling, and gifts. Please don't forget to read your reading assignment. And I want to know next lesson, next week when we come back, what you heard, your feedback and comment about this lesson. So don't forget it. And please watch it again, again, and again, and again until it becomes real to you. Father, I thank you for the word that you gave it to us today, the sevenfold dimension of our purpose. Let it be engraved in our spirit, man, in our hearts, Father. I bless your people. I cancel the assignments of the enemy against their life because of this word. Every retaliation of the enemy in any way or form against them or myself or my family, anybody connected to me, Father, I cancel it in Jesus' name. I thank you for your protection and your favor. Thank you for this privilege of learning about your purpose for which you created us. We love you. We bless you. Thank you for blessing us. Uh, in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Sorry I couldn't be with you live because I'm traveling, ministering in Chicago. I will see you next week live again teaching the third lesson. Okay? Have a wonderful week. I will see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.